In full swing, you might have feelings of anxiety and stress with millions on edge over what the results could bring. We have you covered with tips on how to ease that tension. With us now is Jackie Shields, a clinical psychologist with Kaiser Permanente. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. I think a lot of people might be worried about the election results, but other than voting, they really don't have any control. You vote and then that's it. You have to wait. Uh, how are people dealing with that? Uh, it depends. Some of us are not dealing as well and others of us have kind of removed ourselves and are marching forward. So I think although it's our responsibility to vote today, much of this anxiety is based in uncertainty. Much of it is out of our hands at this point. Right. And it used to be that you would find out the night of, but now this uh, you know, feeling of angst could go on for a few days. What do you do if you find yourself uh, being short with people, yeah. uh, being, you know, maybe you're heart's beating fast. What do, you, what do you do in that situation? So it, it's twofold. One, choose empathy. When you communicate with your loved ones, with your friends, with your colleagues, always base your conversations in empathy, knowing that everybody has different diverse backgrounds and it makes people who they are and what they believe in. And then similarly, if you're finding yourself with those symptoms of panic and anxiety, do something to help ground you. Refill your fuel tank. Go on a walk. Eat good, adequate nutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, let's say you're watching at home. Uh, how do you know when it's that point that you need to step away? Mm -hmm. um, some of us know. I say, I don't want to watch this anymore. I'm going to watch sports or whatever, whatever we do, yeah. right? But maybe some people don't know, yet uh, they, they start having symptoms like being mm -hmm. grouchy or yeah. having a headache. Can you tell me how you would know when it's time? Certainly. So I think it's best for folks at home to choose two or three of their top news sources and check on it a couple of times a day, maybe, you know, three, four times a day. And I think we're all on autopilot with our cell phones. We check it, you know, five, ten times an hour. Mm -hmm. And so one of the cool, helpful settings you can enable is focus mode, where it kind of takes all of the text messages that you want, but it quiets the notifications from your apps. And I think that could be a really helpful tool for folks at home. What about contentious people, maybe people who don't see the way you do? This is a very polarized country, uh, and someone might say something. Uh, how do you uh, mm -hmm. avoid reacting and perhaps ruining a friendship? So difficult. I think we need to debate ideas, not identities. Um, we, we value people. They're our friends for a reason. We don't always need to mesh politics with our personal preferences on why we like to engage with somebody. And finally, um, you know, this is a day that comes once every four years. I, I don't think the other elections are quite as panic-inducing, right? Because uh, mm -mm. The, the less it happens, the more it is a special event. After today, maybe people can... Do you think mm -hmm. people will come back to being kind of more grounded? I certainly hope so. I think after today, once folks go to the polls and make their vote, because their vote really does matter, we have to think beyond today. We have to think about how we can build tomorrow. And I think no matter what your political alignment is and whether you align with your family and your friends, we all can agree on like a long-term community strength. Yeah, so if it's getting too much, just step away for a little bit. Step away, do what refills you, do what satisfies you, and know when enough is enough. All right, Jackie Shields, clinical psychologist with Kaiser Permanente. Thank you for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Coming